This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. Today is Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. We have a, a, a treat today in the daily update. Um, one of the joys of the last uh, couple months since, since we've been in this distanced time uh, has been the opportunity to collaborate with colleagues across the country in ways that's, uh, that's harder to do uh, when we're in Nebraska and North Carolina. And as I mentioned last week, um, one of the places that my ministry lives, other than at, uh, at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, is through uh, service with the Unitarian Universalist Christian Fellowship. And so my friend Sadie and I uh, both joined the board at UUCF at about the same time and over this summer, we've put together two um, projects that we're pretty excited about. The, the first is a Bible study for skeptics who have been known to pray that we're ready to announce. It's going to run uh, on Wednesday nights every other week in October. I've posted about it on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to put up a flyer for it here. Um, we're pretty excited to see where it goes. You know, we, we both approach uh, scripture with, with uh, different backgrounds and different um, different meaning making uh, as, as we come towards it, but uh, we're looking forward to, to spending some time this fall really diving into what it means to, to grapple with scripture from a uniquely Unitarian Universalist point of view. The other project that we've been working on a little bit um, is, a, is a hymn project uh, for, for UUCF to start uh, generating some content for them. Um, and we recorded a pilot of the project with the two of us. So I'm going to get out of the way uh, and, uh, and just play that, uh, that pilot video for the rest of the update. Have a great day, uh, and I will see you tomorrow where we'll talk through some more details about the, uh, uh, the congregational virtual retreat that's starting on Thursday. So welcome hey, everyone. Hey, it's <laughs> Hey Sadie. Um, um so welcome to the the Unitarian Universalist Christian Fellowships uh first of an occasional series on on hymns. Um so the the idea is just to ask folks folks to come in and sing a, a verse uh or or the whole of their favorite hymn and and then talk about it. Two years ago at General Assembly in Spokane, um, somewhat by accident, um, two of our colleagues and Sadie and I ended up um, by uh, a piano at a river at like 10 o'clock on, on uh, I think it was Thursday night in Spokane, just singing old hymns that aren't in the UU hymnals, but we love, um, starting with Shall We Gather at the River and then continuing on for like two hours. We were going to do it again uh, this year in, in Providence, and um, so we'll do it on Zoom. Um, so we'll do it on Zoom. <laughs> we are bringing the river to you, my friends. Yes. Sadie, I think you've got a hymn picked out, I understand. Sure do. Um, so this one is actually in our hymnal, but we've changed all the words, and I have um, a really um, powerful fondness for the original Christian words. So this is, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, tune my heart to sing Thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. And then the third verse. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here 
is my heart. Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. So why come thou font of every blessing? Uh, it is those lines in the third verse. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Some of that is, um, you know, we sang it a lot at Union. I went to Union Theological Seminary, and um, which is how Oscar and I know each other. He did a semester there. And um, I have some strong and positive memories of, like, singing hymns at parties which is a super fun, cool thing that people do in seminary. And <laughs> um, so, I mean, some of it is just social, right? Some of it is just like, just like a strong association with um, either chapel services or just hanging out with people I care about. But some of it is when I was in my third year at Union, I was a chaplain in the psychiatric emergency room mm -hmm. at New York Presbyterian Hospital. And um, much of the, the Unitarian Universalist faith of my childhood had been concerned with um, the question, you know, what is the right thing to do? When you are the one in, in the position to act, what is the right thing to do? And I think that's a really important question. I mean, it's like at the center of the heart of what I think religion is about, but there's another question, right? Which is like, what about when you feel like you can't do anything? Right. Um, right? Like what, what about when, when you are encountering hopelessness and helplessness and suffering and despair beyond your comprehension, yours or someone else's, um, you know, what does your faith have to teach you about that? And, um, um, and in this hymn, I found a resource that I, um, that I just needed really desperately, you know, I needed to be able to sing about um, something else outside of me as the source of goodness and mercy. Yeah. So that line, oh, to grace, how great a debtor. That's, that's a unusual theological line in Unitarian Universalism. What does that mean? What is that concept of grace for you? I preach about this all the time. If any of my congregants are here, they'll, um, they'll, they'll hear some familiar themes. But, you know, however you describe the source of it all, the beating heart of life, you know, the, um, the great unearned gift that is living, um, we don't make it or buy it or practice it or vote on it or confer it upon one another, it is ours by birthright. And what universalists mean when we say ours is every one of us. Mm -hmm. That's not a claim about if people are inherently good or inherently bad. Um, it's just that by living upon the earth, you know, we owe a debt. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, I just, I think this is something a lot of us recognize intrinsically. I think just like, you know, I suffer when my neighbor suffers. And, you know, um, in professional ministry or not, I think a lot of us recognize, right, that like the great calling of our lives is to try to make some repair, to try to like do honor to um, what it is that brought us here, to, um either make repair for the suffering that our ancestors have inflicted upon other people to avenge the suffering of those ancestors, like the movement for black lives says, some complicated combination of the two, um, you know, but like all of us owe a debt. Yeah. And um, it's not, it's not that I wake up every day and I decide, you know, having reasoned it out, I suppose, like on balance, I'll try to like be a better person or whatever. Um, right. There's like a real power mm -hmm. in, in those lines and a real acknowledgement that like, I, um, you know, I, I, um, my wandering heart 
is it's not a criticism, right? It's just a description. Yeah. <laughs> just it's just the way that we are, you know. Um, but like, but but I need my wandering heart to be bound to God, to the source of love, to um, to the great blessing that is life, and I uh, and I need that for other people also. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, and um, yeah, Thanks, we'll, Oscar. we'll get it up and. One day we'll sing it at the river. One day we'll sing it at the river. I hear you there's know? rivers and well, there's a there's a lake in Milwaukee. Well, we'll sing it at the lake then. There we go.